Here we have a D15B Z6 P08 intake manifold. It is owned by Earl, a contender in Petron Bracket in Grid Race Championship. And of course, he's holding his own. Look at that. He's been winning. So now they they want to up the level. So they sent out the intake manifold for us to port and develop because they're actually rebuilding the engine. So he runs a D15B VTEC bone stock. And you can see in the trophies, he's holding his own. So we cut this open. As you can see, and then we're going to port it, show you guys stage by stage on how we do it. And of course, here is a carbide. Yes, and we're working on the short side of the intake manifold. And we'll show you a before and after and during. So you know, this one's for you. Let's go. <laughs> Here we have the PO8 intake manifold as we received it. It's all clean. We're going to line this up here. We're going to cut it here and then across onto the side and all the way to the back here. This way, the plan is going to be opened up and let's support the runner entries and of course, even the plenum. So we're going to line up a ink here with a marker. Yes, and we cut it all the way so that we can port that. When once it goes with a B16 throttle. See, Earl is gonna upgrade to a B16 throttle. As you can see here, the intake manifold is unported, it's fresh and stock. So now here we inked up the line here. So we're gonna cut it with a pneumatic air saw across here, just to show you guys where we cut it. And then through and through, and then all the way here to the throttle flange. Yep. Okay. I mean, you can cut it just on top of the plenum, but then the, the problem with that is when you have it welded, sometimes it gets too close or, you know, it misaligned. So we actually take advantage of the throttle for the alignment. Here's all cut up now. Here's all the way through and through up to the back. Yep, we have to drill there just to get the saw inside. So yeah, let's remove this. Oh yeah. As you can see here, it's bone stock. It's actually in stock form, it's shaped really well. You can see the entry is more like rounded off like a velocity stack. So yep, this is a good baseline or this is a good foundation on starting good work. Here you can see it better. We're gonna show this because you know, once we start pointing it in the carbide, it's gonna be a little different. And here this angle. So we're gonna try to show you before, during and then after. So now let's head up to the workbench. Here it is. Okay, we use the pulley just to put it on top so that it won't move around. So, you know, you don't want the manifold falling off when you're porting it. And so let's start with the carbide here. You can start with the eight but it's gonna take forever or too long. So we go with the carbide first. And yes, with time lapse, so it doesn't get too boring. As you can see, we're starting to take the initial shaping going on. And here you can actually, when, when you're doing this, you can actually feel, feel the ridges or the the misalignment of the way, the way it was casted so it's easy to actually smooth it out and fix it and you know by doing that it improves the efficiency of the intake manifold because air flows better or easier when everything is consistent and contoured well all right there you go let me clip the phone and show you guys there you can see the casting marks of the course shift is still there so we're going to clean it up we move it here to invert the manifold. Here it is. Now we're going to touch up on the short turn or the roof side of the runner entry. Yes. There's a bit more material here so you can actually widen it better. There you go. It's getting there. Now it's, this is the initial stage. So we got to do this a little bit more just to get the shape going before we go to the 80 grit. Yes, now we clean this up, let me show you the workbench when it's clean. Here you go. That's the initial shaping is starting now. Here you see, you can still flare it some more. And we're gonna do that, but we're just showing you the initial stage of, you know, how it is with just the carbide. Uh, this angle here, we're gonna show you before and after. So this is the during, right? Yep. And here I have the picture where it was before it was touched. Here's the stock form. And then during, so later before 
and after. Of course, if you're liking this video, hit the like button. This way, the algorithm will notify, will notice that it has good activity and it'll spread to a wider audience. That helps my channel really, really well. So I really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Yes, and of course, if you haven't, subscribe. This way, you can be part of our community. Whenever we have a new upload, you get notified and see if it's good for you. Check it out. And of course, we continue to discuss it on the comment section. So thank you for that, guys. Subscribe. I'll wait for you guys, all right? Okay, now let's start with this. Let me show you this. And this is Earl's VTI. It actually runs a D15B. It's bone stock here. And before his rebuild, and before we got the manifold, he's been racing this like this, and it's been holding its own. Look, he's been winning trophies and trophies. Here it is. You see that? And also the next picture here, him and his group of friends. Yes. They're doing really good. And if you remember this one, Marvin's ESI that actually runs a D15 non VTEC, an LXI engine. So we had to rebuild it and he wanted, he got an upgrade for a PO8 Z6 head. So now it's a D15B VTEC, but it's still 1500. He's been winning his, you know, his positions, his places for constantly for like a year or two. So the reason why I mentioned this is because we got some people asking me on what setup is good for circuit racing, what pistons and whatnot. And actually they haven't even gotten a Civic yet. So I always tell them, get your feet on the ground. Like, you know, get your feet wet first, you know, drive it on tracks so you know. And even then after a stock rebuild with a few tweaks is more than enough. Like these guys, they've been winning without even, you know, high compression pistons and whatnot. So those guys should stop asking their friends because their friends are all gonna, gonna tell them a drag setup. And sadly, that's not even their own setup. It's setup they've seen somewhere online. So that's kind of difficult, right? You're gonna be spending money going nowhere. So you gotta think properly for that. So now let's continue the manifold. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, this is still 80 grit, we're still going with it. The more we go, the more we continue with it with proper lubrication, we get it smoother and smoother. Here you can see that it's getting closer. So we'll continue this and do the rest of the runner entries. And of course, then we're gonna show you here. We didn't record it, but now here we've got we made a pass on all four. Look at that. Now the shape is getting there, it's getting close to how much how I like it. So yep, this is this gonna be really really good. So, yep, we go a few more passes and then we shoot, switch to the vice. We're going to put it here, uh, here, wait, here, because we're going to go with 120 grit now just to get it really good. Yes. So you can see now we're, we're spraying it further. This is 120 grit and it's going to give us an even more consistent finish. Yes, you can see that. Because if we don't use the lubrication, the, the mix that I made, it's not, it doesn't make it clear. It, like it just spreads out the dirt. There you go, it's getting closer, right? Yep. Yeah, we're gonna continue doing a few more passes here. And then of course, after we're gonna go on the intake flange side. And here you can see after a few more passes, look at that. Oh yeah, this finish is really, really good. So we're gonna continue deeper. And then of course, we'll continue on the other side of the intake by the flange. And once that's ready, we're gonna clean this up so that we can show you on the workbench. So we're gonna make a few more passes here with 120 grit and then go on the other side. And after cleaning, we go to the workbench. And now here it is all finished up. And would you look at that? Yes. See, the runner entries are like a bunch of velocity stacks, right? And it's contoured well, especially runner number four that's coming from the throttle onto the entry there. Here's on the other side. Look at that. Oh, yeah. This is going to be performing really, really good and flowing efficiently. Even if it's just a stock intake manifold, it's going to be really good. Here, let's look at this on this, this side here. It's ported through and through. Yep. But we left the half inch or one inch before the flange untouched. This way, it can be port matched by Earl and his and the shop that he goes to really well to match the head. And here it is. Look at that velocity stacks, right? Yes, 
this is gonna be really really good and of course earlier i said we're gonna show it before during and after so here's the before then during and then after yep before and then halfway through and then the finished product now we can compare it look at that that's a good difference right yes now you know this is going to be flowing really really good and be more efficient it's going to be really good for earl hey he might be a champion consistently this time yes look at that it's shaped and contoured well that's all finished in 120 grit and of course the lubrication that we mixed okay now let me invert the intake manifold just to show you the other side here look at that yep that's all good now of course on the throttle we're gonna part match it once it's welded once it's done yes on this area here we're gonna port it to 60 millimeter because earl is upgrading himself with a b16 throttle so i have an itr 62 millimeter throttle here so i'm gonna match that this way it gives him a one millimeter room all around and it promotes anti-reversion all right so now we bolt up a stock throttle here so we can have it welded by carlo carlo has been welding manifolds for us since 2008 so you guys go do the math yes we can cut it there but it's, it's gonna it's, the alignment will be more difficult it's a lot easier to align everything when it's bolted up with the throttle and here we drilled there to be able to just bend the air saw to cut all the way through so it's gonna get welded this is gonna be fine Let's go on the other side to turn it some more here. Yep, now it's getting ready to be welded. Card is gonna pick it up for me and it's gonna weld it. And the next day I'm gonna get it, it's all done. So now here it is getting ready. This is how it is. Yep, and it's gonna pick it up. We're gonna leave it by the, you know, porch. There you go. Now it's all welded. Yes, through and through. All the backside, yes. This looks really, really good. And of course, now it's all be tough and good because it's TIG welded. And here, we actually leave the flange unwelded for now until we port match it. After we port match the throttle that's going to be used, we send it back to Carlo to weld up the flange and we're going to send it off flat. It's easy. It's easier to do this this way. It avoids warping. You can weld it all the way together at one time, but we've noticed that causes a lot more warp. Unlike this now, it's all welded. It won't warp after. All right. Now here we port match. Okay, let me get the, my phone to light up. There you go. We've port matched this to 60 millimeter. Well, actually it's 62 millimeters. So it's gonna match well with a B16 throttle. There's a one millimeter step all around to promote anti-reversion. But when you look at the ported run entries, yep, that looks really, really good, right? Yes. And here we are. Done with the port matching. Now it's all good and shaped well. And actually, you can see on the flange, we actually carved it a bit this way. When the welds get in there, it's going to be all good. It's, we, we can flatten it perfectly onto the flange itself as a flat, you know, surface. Yes. Now this is going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be performing really, really good. Way, way better than stock. Yes. And I've been doing this for like several years and, you know, it's going to be really good. Here we test fitted my ITR throttle, which is 62 millimeter. Look at that. Wait, there's no light. Let me get my phone again. Let's push this light here. There you go. Here. Yes. Perfectly part matched. So now when you put the B16 throttle here, it's going to be absolutely perfect and that's gonna be good yes so this product this this manifold is all good now yep and actually as soon as i get to you know solve the issues on the registration and paperwork of my car my engine we might downgrade it to d15 to a d15b but we'll continue using a non-vtec d16a6 head and all the all the setup will be the same the the plan is we're gonna dyno it with just a stock poa z6 manifold and then the next dyno will dyno my ported poa z6 manifold and and of course for the last time it'll 
run my skunk 2 original skunk 2 intake that is ported that's gonna be the final dyno we're gonna take advantage of the chance of being able to dyno back to back ported non-ported stock intake yep and as soon as we get to do that you know it's gonna be on this channel so yep but for now you can just click here for more